Alright guys, before we get into the video, I want to tell you, you guys to join the crusade today. Get awesome perks and rewards. Get access to discounts on the website. Don't forget to check out our website down below as well. Get access to awesome products and sometimes some only members only products. But if you guys want to support the channel, check out that website. Get some awesome gear, awesome merch. It goes a long way. Huge shout out again and let's get into the video. What is good guys? Charles from Team COG. Come on you guys with a second place, that is right, second place in for Noble Knight uh, deck profile, or just kind of local report. It's gonna, deck profile's gonna be in there. I'm, excuse me guys, I have COVID. I, you guys haven't checked the community poll. I tested positive and both my wife and I did. So yeah, that's just gonna be kind of rough. So I thought if I'm sick with the Rona, what's the best thing to do? Play remote duels. So I ended up going to Core TCG, which if you guys don't know, that's practically the only remote duels I play in outside of like one other one that I attempted, I played in and got, I think, second with. Uh, for the most part, this this remote duel, like locals, core is very competitive. Hanko Chow, Pack, Triff, Nim Nim, like you may, like a lot of notable and very good uh, Kahan, uh, a lot of notable people play in this locals. So the competitive ceiling is pretty high. I highly don't recommend going there if you want to have casual and have a good time. A lot of people there play very competitive. And we started from getting zero wins to getting one win to getting eighth place. There we go. There we go. Eighth place to finally getting uh, second place. And we're just one step away from taking the whole locals. But this is fresh right after it. I thought I would actually jump in and showcase you guys the deck list, talk to you guys about my matchups, and just go over some interactions and stuff like that. Uh, again, I'd like to apologize. I probably look like a skeleton, look like a ghost, death. I'm normally not this pale. It's just I've been getting my butt kicked by this virus. But without further ado, let's just go ahead and jump into the local report, shall we? All right, guys, here is the deck profile, the deck list. I'm going to go ahead and jump into my matches. Uh, round one was uh, Cyber Dragons. Sadly, the poor guy ended up opening like, he made me go first, which Cyber Dragons, you know, what are you going to do? Uh, they're going to try and go second. So he made me go first. I ended up making Herald, and the poor guy opened Galaxy Soldiers and like a Kaiju, and all he had was Galaxy Soldiers, no good Cyber Dragon cards. But then the... Um, the problem was that he had to get the kaiju to solve one of the problems. My Charles was beefed up. My Charles was uh, untargetable and made everything else unable to be targeted. So his infinity was going to be useless. So he had the choice. He could either kaiju the Charles and then not be able to like get any sort of benefit off of the galaxy soldiers. Uh, so he chose to kept kaiju and the Herald. And that went on for two games. And I took that game. Uh, the next game was Virtual World. That game went 2-1. Uh, I went first, won the die roll, set up Charles, all this stuff. Uh, he ended up Zeusing me that game, but I had so much advantage in the following turn, that Gear Freak touchdown, and then I banished Charles off of uh, Phoenix Blade and then just DDR'd him back and just won that way. Game two, VFD, what can you say, you know. Uh, then after that, game three, opened the same board. Poor guy couldn't play. It is what it is. Uh, not to mention that two out of those three games, he had opened the Rock, but the first round or game one, I actually opened the, the combo that I showcased on the channel previously, so check it out. Uh, it's if you open Connector plus Renaud plus Extender, you can practically play through the rock, and that's what I did. And then the final hand, I like kind of was like, or the final game I hand, I was like, God, this hand's so bad. And then right in front of me was uh, the Ogier and Gearfried combo, so I ended up making Gearfried under five summons, and he had the rock. That was the only hand trap he had uh, outside of, I think, round one he had Droll or something, or Ash, but I ripped that out of his hand, and then he just had the rock, but... Anyway, guys, I apologize. I look awful, but it is what it is. I have an excuse. What is it? So, uh, anyway, after the uh, virtual world, I played ABCs. Uh, this guy right here, this poor guy, bricked going first. He won the dice roll. He let me go. He went first, but then he uh, just passed me, so I had a free day. He ended up gamma me and then ashing my Hulk, but I had this very weird hand. My hand was just enough gas to play through my Hulk getting ashed, and that doesn't happen often at all. Uh, really, 100% it, it does not happen often at all, but um, that's okay. You know, not much can really be said about that, you know, but anyway, uh, we're just going to go ahead and jump into the profile here. And well, wait a second. I forgot about the last match. This is the best match. Uh, so my final match, which I lost to, was an Infernoble Mirror match. Uh, he went first. What can I say? He ripped my starters from my hand because I had no hand traps. Next game, I ended up setting up my board. Um... He was playing a different build. He was playing the Armageddon Knight and the Plague Spreader. I'm not a fan of that build. However, it does let you put back bricks. Uh, I go first. The next game, I ended up opening the Despot and the Coltwing, but I'm still able to put up Charles and a uh, Savage. And Charles is 
equipped with male silver armor, which means that they cannot target my um, entire, they cannot target anything, so their equip spells can't even be equipped. And he ends up just conceding. We go into the next one, and I almost break his board. He has Charles Herald. I almost break it. I actually play it all the way up. I, he, I break, I beat the Herald, get rid of the Charles, and I go up into my Aurora Dawn, and then he rocks me, and then he just punishes me with Gear Freed, and that's all she wrote for me. But anyway, uh, let's just go ahead and jump into the quick layout of the profile. I don't think anything's changed since the last time that I showed the profile, but you know, it might have. But for the most part, I can talk about how powerful these cards are, and like you can understand like the utility that they have. Um, still rocking the triple Gear Freed. Well, triple Gear Freed, man, COVID's got me killed. Uh, triple Renaud here. Uh, this card is phenomenal. It's a great recursion. There's not much more can be said. There's a reason why this card was 30 bucks on palm release, and there's a reason why it's still maintaining a $15, close to $15 value today. Uh, then we have the Oliver, the best tuner extender we have, and this card plus Metal Sun Armor is busted. And then the one Ogier. I actually finally did cut Ogier down to one. I don't know if I did that the last profile. Like I said, this is just a local report. Just trying to... I shouldn't really be doing an in-depth profile, but... It is, I'm kind of hyped on the moment, so we'll just do what it is. Uh, but OG is still really good. It's really accessible. I can't really say much more about it. It just comes in. I mean, it just comes in pretty clutch. I can't really lie. It can equip itself, and then the foolish burial is really is really nice as well. But that is it for the Infernobles. I really don't really like this count for Infernobles. I would much rather have an additional one. And I've actually thought about playing. Um, let me find him. Uh, Alstofo, uh, playing him, and just using him to uh as another target because he can manipulate levels but i have yet to fit him in i don't know why i cut for the list ran really smooth uh however i would like to maybe consider like prior to going into the event uh, i was considering cutting gear free down but i chose not to and i'll get i'll explain that a little bit more when i get there but triple red and double fire flint uh never i know some people play three three but i think this is the perfect ratio uh this guy is a starter whereas this per guy is an extender uh, just simply because you already have to commit your normal summon to get this out, whereas like Red Lair just comes down. And if you open these two together, it's a free as old, which is just ridiculous. Uh, moving on, triple Gear Freed. So Gear Freed here, like I said, I was considering cutting him down to two, uh, just because like my argument with playing a three was, you know, you want to open this guy, you want to have access to him. So my argument was cutting him down uh, to, to fit in an Ostofo. But I'm not going to lie, guys, I did not see him enough. So I might just leave him in at three, uh, just because I want to see Gear Freed. I mean, like, if you guys don't know, uh, the OG here, Gear Freed here, is my favorite card art in the entire game. So if I'm not playing Gear Freed, I'm not really going to play this deck. So I kind of like maximizing him at three. Uh, there hasn't been, a t like, in testing, he did brick, but not in the tournament, he didn't brick. Like I said, I really didn't see him except for the hand that I was able to make him under my fifth summon. But he is a powerhouse on himself. He is like the main deck way to out Dragoons. Uh, you bait the Dragoons, Nate, and then you just take it, which is another reason why I wanted to play it. But uh, moving on, uh, just for the last of the Fire Warriors, the last of the real ones here, uh, Gimba, not much more can be said. I still play this. I know some people moved away from this. And it's, just, it, it's what I do. You know, I play it. Uh, keep going, Connector and Dolphin. Uh, best normal summon, hands down. The ability that this card right here has you to rip cards is phenomenal. Uh, the hand knowledge is fantastic. The ability to play around things like the first game, guys, I had got the hand knowledge of him having a kaiju, so I knew, like, oh, the guy's going to probably kaiju my Charles this time, so I need to get rid of that kaiju. So instead of making Savage, I just made Omega and hand looped for two more cards. Didn't get the kaiju, but, you know, the, the possibility to flex, the flexibility there is what's important. Uh, the new addition to the deck, I don't know if this was in the last profile, but Triple Ash Blossom. Uh, you just, I, the deck's super consistent. It's not, doesn't need, like, it's not like Crusadia where it needs to have, like, all gas, no breaks. Hand Traps do, does not water down the deck that much, and I figured playing three of the best generic Hand Trap Ash was appropriate, and it allows, like, siding to be easier, so it's like, when I'm siding in my side deck, which was very lacking uh, in this event, I definitely want to, like, talk to my guys and uh, talk to my uh, playmates and see uh, what we can do to make my side deck better, but uh, for the most part, Ash put in work, but uh, definitely it's just a flex spot. You could, you could play more extenders, but I highly recommend playing a hand trap. The deck combos with one to two card combos, uh, so opening one hand trap with them is not too bad. Uh, on to the Faithful Bricks, Despot, and Coltwing. I'm not even going to get into the statistics of how you should ever see these, but you will see these. But a good thing to note is you will even if you open both of these, you can still combo. Uh, even if you open uh, Coltwing, you will still be able to make like Charles and a Savage, which is 
still really good, especially in this build where you can soft lock your opponent with the Charles. Moving on, uh, we are rocking Triple Heritage. I mean, this is why this deck is so consistent. I do always remember if they destroy a Noble, Arm, Noble Arms, if they destroy a Noble Knight by battle, you can add this back, which gives you extra resources. Uh, just try to remember that. That was at the top of my head uh, when I was playing, and I remembered it. It just never came up. But finally, one reinforcing army. Uh, this right here searches any of your Noble Knights or its additional copies of Durandal. Uh, this right here is just happens to be the fourth copy of Connector or Fire Flint Lady. Uh, triple Durandal. Durandal is really cool. I guess another card I wanted to try and test out, a few cards I wanted to try and test out, was Doppel Warrior and uh, Joyous, uh, mostly because Joyous is Charles' sword, but th th this never truly came up. Uh, you're always going for Durandal. And then Doppel Warrior. Doppel Warrior is cool and it allows you to play some pretty powerful plays and play and allows you to still use Metal Marcher and all this cool stuff, but it requires you having to hard open or search out the Renan and the Oliver. And that just is... I, I just chose not to do that because as consistent as that is, it's not as consistent because the other way by summoning Gimba, you just go into a ward onto your whole combo that way. Uh, moving on, we still are playing Triple Fossil. Uh, playing the last uh, Infernoble guy, we talked about how Droll is so weak against this deck that or, that you know anyone who is not playing a power tool because they fear Droll is has really have nothing to fear. Uh, most of the times you can resolve your Isolde and not even use the search effect and then just search off of the uh, Living Fossil or search off of the power tool get your Living Fossil. There you go. Uh, you only lose to Droll when you happen to open like a handful of like Durham Dolls and Heritage or like Rhoda and they have Droll. But other than that, you're playing through it or you're sniping it with Connector, which is which is free real estate at that point. Uh, double DDR, not much can be said. And then one metal, metal Silver Armor, this card is MVP. It just is super good against almost every matchup. Having that soft lock of your opponent not being able to target any monster is really good. It really hurts the uh, virtual strategy especially when Charles can remove the card that they put on, like the continuous spell or the continuous trap that they can target. When Charles removes that, they really can't do anything. Uh, I totally forgot about that and let that happen and almost cost me the game. Uh, but this card also in the mirror match is really good because then they can't equip their like Durandal or anything. Uh, Middle Summer is just a really soft lock that practically makes your entire board protected from like droplets, uh, impermanence, just things like that. Like your, your board's already protected from droplets because of Herald, but like this is additional like additional wall against the uh against it and then finally phoenix blade this card is not banned over here so we are going to play it and then monster reborn uh, this is actually a flex card you probably don't need to play this i never saw this but you know it is really good when you see it except for the times that i saw it it was bad but you know in theory you should see it and it should be good but it's only if you don't open no warriors it's bad you know what i'm saying uh, moving on to the extra deck the extra deck has kind of changed a little bit I got a weird thing, so like, I'll just explain here. Uh, nothing's really changed in these in this route here. Uh, this These cards have always stayed the same, uh, but this card right here is my Dragoon Outer. So like, this is how we out Dragoon, and it is just... <laughs> it, I gobbled two, two Dragoons at uh, this tournament. This card is really crazy. This is my replacement for uh, access code until I buy one, and I just was like, you know, what the hell? Let's throw it in and see what it does. I'm just slobbering up a Dragoon. Uh, you just make an Isolde, use Isolde's effect, and then Normal Summon, like the turn three. Or you could even do it turn two, you know, like it's, it's really it's really not that hard. And then you just suck all those up into the, the Goddess, and then bye-bye, Dragoon. See ya. But uh, that was the thought process behind it, was just to out Dragoons, out those Promic Monsters. Uh, it could also out a Charles, out a VFD if needed, uh, except for you probably wouldn't get to a VFD point because they'd VFD you. But uh, it could out of Charles. It was just really good on in thought, and it performed very well on paper. However, I still would play an access code over this. Don't think that this is a cheap alternative to access code, because it's not. It's just a budget boys uh, replacement for now. But that's it for the links. Uh, moving on, we still rocking Roland and Charles. My guys, like, let me show us some backstory of this deck, right? Uh, so when this deck was revealed, I was like, I gotta play this because they turned me into a card. So I have to play, I have to play this. I got to. And um, then I started looking at pure Noble Knight routes. And then all of a sudden, Konami did us the dirty and Toon Chaos and didn't give us a structure deck. And uh, when Renauds were 30 bucks a piece and uh, Gearfreeds were 20, I was like, 
nah, I don't like this deck that much. Now, after playing the deck, I like the deck that much. I wish I'd have put the money down when they dropped. But uh, regardless, these two cards are phenomenal. I really shouldn't say much more about them. Uh, are out to Droplets, Quandax, and here. Uh, so something to note that's very interesting, if they ash your Hall of Fibrax and you're able to put out a four, whether it be Connector again, whether it to be um, Ogier, you have a lot of routes to do this. Uh, you can tag out, because the Halk is just sitting there, into Quandax and use Quandax and Ogier, or Quandax and Connector, go into Savage or go into Omega. Um, it doesn't come up a lot, but another point to this allows you to free up space when there's an extra token there. You just use your level one extender, and instead of syncing with the level seven Aurora or level seven Colt Wing, you sync with the level three token, turning it into a four, making Quandex the, the Aurora, not the Aurora, I'm gonna say mixing up the Colt Wing, then reduce its level to four, and then you just synchro um, Quandex and level four Colt Wing into your synchro of your choice. One power tool. Power tool is really good. I, you're sleeping on it, guys. You're really sleeping on it if you're not playing this. Uh, we don't lose a draw. We only lose to Imperm, so play power tool. Uh, one Savage and one Omega. Uh, Omega, like I said today, guys, like the like you have almost have to play Omega just because like when you see cards in your opponent's hand, like those power cards that are, since we don't have Smoke Grenade, uh, Omega is like the next best thing because we can rip Dark Lord Omores. It's randomly, but at least it's still a chance. Like you have a one in three chance, a one in four chance, a one in two chance, you know, to rip those powerful cards from your opponent. So that's like today, as I was saying earlier, where the guy had a kaiju. I ripped the ash from his hand. I knew he had a kaiju, so I ripped two more cards from his hands. Still didn't hit the kaiju, but it's the fact of having the option to do that. But I did hit cards like Harpy's Feather Duster from his hand, which would have wiped out my Charles from being like stacked and other things like that. But uh, yeah, guys, so that is it for the kind of like the local report and the deck profile or the deck layout. Uh, not much more than we said. Uh, hopefully next time we take first. That's all I can say. But thank you guys so much for supporting the channel. And your boy here is going to go drink some NyQuil and some Theraflu and go attempt to sleep. Uh, but this is Charles from Team COG signing out.